Shirku was in a power struggle over Egypt with Shawar and Amalrak I of Jerusalem in which Shawar requested Amalrak's assistance. In 1169, Shawar was reportedly assassinated by Salahuddin Ayubi, and Shirku died later that year. Following his death, a number of candidates were considered for the role of Wazir to al adid most of whom were ethnic Kurds. Their ethnic solidarity came to shape the Ayyubid family's actions in their political career. Salahuddin Ayyubi and his close associates were wary of Turkish influence. On one occasion Isa al-Hakri, a Kurdish lieutenant of Salahuddin Ayyubi, urged a candidate for the wazirship, Emir Qutbuddin al-Hadbani, to step aside by arguing that, both you and Salahuddin Ayyubi are Kurds and you will not let the power pass into the hands of the Turks. Nuruddin chose a successor for Shirku, but Al-Adi appointed Salahuddin Ayyubi to replace Shawar as wazir. The reasoning behind the sheer kale of Al-Adid's selection of Salahuddin Ayyubi, a Sunni, varies. IBN Al-Atir claims that the caliph chose him after being told by his advisors that, there is no one weaker or younger, than Salahuddin Ayyubi, and, not one of the emirs, commanders, obeyed him or served him. However, according to this version, after some bargaining, he was eventually accepted by the majority of the emirs. al adads advisors were also suspected of promoting Salahuddin Ayyubi in an attempt to split the Syria-based Zengads. Al-Warani wrote that Salahuddin Ayyubi was selected because of the reputation of his family in their generosity and military prowess. Imaduddin wrote that after the brief mourning period for Shirku, during which, opinions differed, the Zenjid emirs decided upon Salahuddin Ayyubi and forced the caliph to invest him as wazir. Although positions were complicated by rival Muslim leaders, the bulk of the Syrian commanders supported Salahuddin Ayyubi because of his role in the Egyptian expedition, in which he gained a record of military qualifications. Inaugurated as wazir on the 26th of March, Salahuddin Ayyubi repented, wine drinking and turned from frivolity to assume the dress of religion, according to Arabic sources of the time. Having gained more power and independence than ever before in his career, he still faced the issue of ultimate loyalty between Al-Adid and Nuruddin. Later in the year, a group of Egyptian soldiers and emirs attempted to assassinate Salahuddin Ayyubi, but having already known of their intentions thanks to his intelligence chief Ali Inesafyang, he had the chief conspirator, Naji, Matamin al khilafa the civilian controller of the Fatimid palace, arrested and killed. The day after, 50,000 black African soldiers from the regiments of the Fatimid army opposed to Salahuddin Ayyubi's rule, along with Egyptian emirs and commoners, staged a revolt. By the 23rd of August, Salahuddin Ayyubi had decisively quelled the uprising, and never again had to face a military challenge from Cairo. Towards the end of 1169, Salahuddin Ayyubi, with reinforcements from Nuruddin, defeated a massive crusader Byzantine force near Damieta. Afterwards, in the spring of 1170, Nuruddin sent Salahuddin Ayyubi's father to Egypt in compliance with Salahuddin Ayyubi's request, as well as encouragement from the Baghdad-based Abbasid Caliph, Al-Mastanjid, who aimed to pressure Salahuddin Ayyubi in deposing his rival Caliph, Al-Ad. 36. Salahuddin Ayyubi himself had been strengthening his hold on Egypt and widening his support base there. He began granting his family members high-ranking positions in the region, he ordered the construction of a college for the Maliki branch of Sunni Islam in the city, as well as one for the Shafi'i denomination to which he belonged in al -Fastat. After establishing himself in Egypt, Salahuddin Ayyubi launched a campaign against the Crusaders, besieging Darum in 1170. Amalrak withdrew his Templar garrison from Gaza to assist him in defending Darum, but Salahuddin Ayyubi evaded their force and captured Gaza in 1187. In 1191 Salahuddin Ayyubi destroyed the fortifications in Gaza built by King Baldwin III for the Knights Templar. 39. It is unclear exactly when, but during that same year, he attacked and captured the Crusader castle of Eilat, built on an island off the head of the Gulf of Aqaba. It did not pose a threat to the passage of the Muslim navy but could harass smaller parties of Muslim ships, and Salahuddin Ayyubi decided to clear it from his path. Sultan of Egypt According to Imaduddin, Nuruddin wrote to Salahuddin Ayyubi in June 1171, telling him to re-establish the Abbasid Caliphate in Egypt, which Salahuddin Ayyubi coordinated two months later after additional encouragement by Najmuddin al khabushani the Shafi'i Faki, who vehemently opposed Shia rule in the country. Several Egyptian emirs were thus killed, but Al-Adid was told that they were killed for rebelling against him. 
He then fell ill or was poisoned according to one account. While ill, he asked Salahuddin Ayubi to pay him a visit to request that he take care of his young children, but Salahuddin Ayubi refused, fearing treachery against the Abbasids, and is said to have regretted his action after realizing what Al-Adid had wanted. He died on the 13th of September, and five days later, the Abbasid Khutbah was pronounced in Cairo in Al-Fastat, proclaiming Al-Mustadi as Caliph. On the 25th of September, Salahuddin Ayubi left Cairo to take part in a joint attack on Kerak and Montreal, the desert castles of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, with Nuruddin who would attack from Syria. Prior to arriving at Montreal, Salahuddin Ayubi however withdrew back to Cairo as he received the reports that in his absence the Crusader leaders had increased their support to the traitors inside Egypt to attack Salahuddin Ayubi from within and lessen his power, especially the Fatimid who started plotting to restore their past glory. Because of this, Nuruddin went on alone. During the summer of 1173, a Nubian army along with a contingent of Armenian former Fatimid troops were reported on the Egyptian border, preparing for a siege against Aswan. The emir of the city had requested Salahuddin Ayyubi's assistance and was given reinforcements under Turan Shah, Salahuddin Ayyubi's brother. Consequently, the Nubians departed, but returned in 1173 and were again driven off. This time, Egyptian forces advanced from Aswan and captured the Nubian town of Ibram. Salahuddin Ayubi sent a gift to Nuruddin, who had been his friend and teacher, 60,000 dinars, wonderful manufactured goods, some jewels, and an elephant. While transporting these goods to Damascus, Salahuddin Ayubi took the opportunity to ravage the Crusader countryside. He did not press an attack against the desert castles but attempted to drive out the Muslim Bedouins who lived in Crusader territory with the aim of depriving the Franks of guides. On 31 July 1173, Salahuddin Ayyubi's father Ayyub was wounded in a horse-riding accident, ultimately causing his death on 9 August. In 1174, Salahuddin Ayyubi sent Turan Shah to conquer Yemen to allocate it and its port Aden to the territories of the Ayyubid dynasty.